Clippers basketball is back. And the Clippers started off with a preseason victory over a second-tier Israeli team. Is there anything to take from that? Well, you know me, always looking at the little things. There are plenty of things to take from that. As the Clippers season officially begins, we're going to talk about it all on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. My name is Darian Vaziri. I've been a Clipper fan for this going on my 18th season. I have my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper. It's also a podcast, Dime Dropper Podcast. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram to find it. Or, of course, check it out yourself. If you're into the history of basketball or you're a Clipper fan, check it out. Or just a basketball fan in general. For today's episode, I'm so excited to finally be talking about some Clippers basketball that actually happened, and I can talk about a game. And there are some major takeaways, actually, to take from this game, even though the Clippers played against... By the way, I was shocked that the Clippers were not playing against Maccabi Tel Aviv. I thought the Clippers were playing against them, but they were actually playing against a second-tier Israeli team known as Maccabi Ra'anana. I hope I'm saying that right. I think I am. Maccabi Ra'anana. And it obviously was not much of a contest. The Clippers beat them up badly, 121-81. to And it was ugly from the first quarter. The Clippers were up 37-16 to after one. And the starting lineup that Ty Lue went with was Marcus Morris Sr., Luke Kennard, Terrence Mann, Jason Preston starting at the point guard, the sophomore out of Ohio that the Clippers did not see at all last season because he was injured all year. And of course, I shouldn't say of course, but Moses Brown starting at the center spot. One of the two backup centers the Clippers have along with rookie Musa Diabate that we've talked about at length, or I've talked about at length, about the backup big position. Can he be Zubats' backup? So there were a couple things I was really looking at in this game. One of them was the backup big and how Moses Brown and Musa Diabate looked. I was trying to get a read of their skill sets, and I think I did. And then there is a player on this team, on this Clipper team, a rotation player that really impressed me, and I just think that he needs to get minutes somehow, and that's Luke Kennard. So I'm going to be talking about that coming up. But overall, the Clippers, you know, went through the motions. It was, both. by the way, shout out to Maccabi Ron, and now they played hard. They tried. You know, it was a great opportunity for them to play against NBA competition and, of course, a championship contender at that, even though they didn't have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, John Wall. But it was just cool to see. You know, it's a great opportunity for them. And by the way, the game was in Seattle, and the great Lenny Wilkins, Sean Kemp, Detlef Schrempf all in attendance. I mean, all the Sonic jerseys in the crowd. Adam Silver, man, you got to get the NBA back to Seattle because they deserve their team back. But as far as the Clippers, it started to get ugly very quickly. 37-16 37-16 to 16 in the first quarter. Marcus Morris Sr. was hitting a couple of shots. He had two threes in the game. And he was being very aggressive in terms of looking for a shot early on. And that's fine. I have no problem with that. Marcus Morris Sr. Obviously, I've said a lot of things about him in these podcasts about whether or not I think he should be on the team. But if he comes off the bench, which it sounds like as of now he probably will, I think it's no big deal. He just needs to not do too much. And Find a way to impact the game even when his shot's not falling. That's really the test for him. And his shot was decent. He missed some shots that he usually makes. He was 4 for 10 in the game, only played 14 minutes. And Marcus Morris Sr. and Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard didn't play the second half at all. But Sr. was doing his typical thing. You know, his shots that he was hitting were his mid-ranges, contested, three ball. He had the green light, as, as you'd expect. And Luke Kennard, I mean, there was a stretch for a long time that he hadn't missed yet. He was hitting everything, and it feels like every time that guy shoots an open three, it's going in. Every single time. And then the Clippers went to the bench. You saw Robert Covington, who I'm actually surprised came off the bench, alongside guys like Amir Coffey, Brandon Boston Jr., Musa Diabate. And you got to see a little bit of what they could do. And Robert Covington, listen to this, guys. Ten minutes played. Didn't play the second half. He actually changed his clothes into street clothes in the second half. Ten minutes played. 
three for four from the field, two for four from three, five for five from the foul line, 13 points, three rebounds, two steals, and plus 20 in 10 minutes. So he was electric, Robert Covington. Not only his shot looked good, but he was getting steals. And you really could see, even though, again, the athleticism and size difference was really the most glaring thing in the game. It wasn't just the skill, but really the athleticism and size difference with the Clippers, the amount of ground they were able to cover, and the active hands and long arms that seemed to just deflect every single pass. Maccabi Ranana had 16 turnovers in the game, and a lot of those were because the Clippers just have a lot of switchability, a lot of versatility, and had their hands active in the passing lanes, and Robert Covington was one of those beneficiaries. But Amir Coffey, also like what I saw from him, especially in the second half, got to the basket. And you know how good Amir Coffey is at getting to the basket and driving the ball. 11 points for him, 4 for 6 in the field, and plus 24 in his minutes. So he was really solid. Terrence Mann, you know, he only shot four times. He was 3 for 4. And in the beginning of the game, he just wasn't really getting the ball much and not doing too much. I thought he was just kind of playing through the flow, playing within the flow of the game. But obviously, I'm not worried about Terrence whatsoever. I think one of the most interesting things, though, from the game was the performance of Jason Preston because we hadn't seen him at all. You know, we've seen Brandon Boston Jr. We even saw Keon Johnson last year before he was traded to Portland in the Robert Covington Norman Powell trade. But we'd never seen Jason Preston. And he started at point. And one thing I noticed right off the bat was Maccabi Ron and I was picking him up full court. And... I think Jason was just kind of looking not to make mistakes at first. Get up, get the ball across half court. Don't lose the ball. Swing it, and let's just run the, run our sets. Run our sets, which were mostly for Luke Kennard or Marcus Morris Sr. to get shots, particularly Luke Kennard. You know, those not too many, like, high pick and rolls for Preston. And even when he was getting a high screen and roll, he wasn't trying to just attack the basket or be super aggressive. He was kind of trying to be a... The vibe I get from Jason Preston is that he's more of a table-setting point guard as opposed to a attack and leverage his how much of a threat he is scoring the ball to pass. Maybe he can become that as he gets more comfortable, but you're not going to be seeing Jason Preston in the regular rotation for the Clippers and getting many minutes this season. He's probably going to be in the Agua Caliente Clippers G League affiliate a lot, and I actually am happy I want him to be because he has potential and you want to see him get minutes and not just ride the bench. But I liked what I saw. You know, He didn't want to turn the ball over, was low mistakes, and I love some of the creative sets they were running for Luke Kennard. I mean... That Spain pick and roll where it's a normal high pick and roll, but then Luke Kennard comes and sets a screen for the screeners, man. It's like a double screen, and then he pops out to the three-point line. It's just awesome. I really like that play. Great misdirection on that. And, yeah, the Clippers just blew it open, cruised. In the fourth quarter, you had guys that are really fighting for roster spots in the game. You know, guys like Luke Will Lucas Williamson from Loyola Chicago and... Michael DeVoe from Georgia Tech. You know, these guys who are not guaranteed roster spots. Xavier Moon, who was on the Clippers last season and actually had some really solid games when a lot of the Clippers were depleted. He actually impressed me. He's a smaller guard, though, and the Clippers aren't really looking to have smaller guards on the roster. But I actually think if, if we're picking 15 players, he probably should make the cut. But overall, really solid first performance. You cannot really take much from this game because it's not even NBA competition. So you got to take everything with a grain of salt. The good thing is there were some good thing. The good thing is there were some things that I noticed, and one of those was analyzing deeply the performances of Moses Brown and Musa Diabate. Did I notice enough that maybe the Clippers don't have to go get go out and get a backup big? I'm going to be talking about that coming right up because it's much better news than you think, Clipper Nation. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available? That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. I actually got one of my jobs on LinkedIn, Ambassador for the Rams. It wasn't easy. It wasn't hard at all. Very easy, in fact. You add your job, and if you're looking to hire people, you put the purple hashtag hiring frame on your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like that, screening questions, make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. Try to finish the year strong and find the right team member to help you do that. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. 
Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. So the biggest question mark, as I've said many times for the Clippers this season, is do they need a backup big? And Moses Brown and Musa Diabate got heavy minutes in this game. Moses Brown... 25, Musa Diabate, also 25. I'm going to start with Moses Brown. He is one large individual. I'm going to start with that. Seven foot two with long arms. He's a presence. You know, when you see his size on the court, I know they were playing against a non-NBA team and not even a first-tier Israeli team, but just seeing his sheer size was, it, it, it kind of, you know, stuck out on screen. One thing I really liked about him, though, was the way he was catching the ball around the basket and going up strong. He even had a very impressive put-back dunk early on in the game that made me go, whoa, okay, very early in the game. And those were encouraging signs. And the stat line was encouraging as well. 14 points and 13 rebounds, six of those being offensive rebounds. But mind you, when I say we got to take it with a grain of salt, at times it looked like that one kid in like a youth basketball league that just has grown so much quicker than everybody else. And he's like off a rebound, just tipping it up in the air like three, four times on some Moses Malone kind of a deal and getting the ball back and getting like three rebounds for that. It felt like that at times. But he has size. The only con, and it's the same thing I said when I had Asher on to talk about it in depth, is he can mainly play drop coverage on defense. You know, he's not very versatile defensively and doesn't seem too mobile and I'm afraid that NBA level competition may be a little too much for him at this stage of his career that's the only concern but I am very encouraged with what I saw his size is just great and he has a pretty decent touch around the rim so 14 and 13 I mean you could argue he was the player of the game he was really good and then Diabate I was very encouraged from what I saw from him it's exactly what Asher said he was guarding everyone on the perimeter all the time, down low. He's got really long arms, and the fact that he was even able, even though they're not NBA players, I'm going to keep saying that, even though they're not NBA players, the fact that he was even able to go out there and slide his feet and show that lateral ability is extremely encouraging. Because if Musa Diabate can prove that in the next game against Portland, because that's going to be NBA players. You know, Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant. You hope some of those, those players play. You get to see him actually move his feet against NBA competition. The guy can definitely be that backup center. Because if he has that ability, that, Hassan Whiteside, you know, Dwight Howard, all those names that I named, that I mentioned in terms of potential guys the Clippers could pick up, none of those guys have the ability to move their feet and be a switchable big. Like Zoo, he's not a, he's not a switch everything big. He's just a big, a big body, like Moses Brown. So honestly, I honestly don't know how much better Hassan Whiteside, Dwight Howard, and these guys are than Moses Brown. He also had two blocks as well. Like, it's not like he's some slouch just sitting there and can't get off the ground at all, even though he's a two-footed leaper. Like, you know, he, he that's what he looked like, a two-footed leaper, catch the ball underneath, go up strong, just like that. But Musa Diabate, on the other hand, there's real potential there for him to be a switchable big that can guard multiple positions. And if he can be that off the bench, whew, Clippers got a good one. I also liked what I saw from him on the offensive end. 14 points, 7 rebounds. He was 5 for 5, but his free throws need a little bit of work. 4 for 8 in that department. But there was even a time where he was dribbling up the ball and made a really nice bounce pass to Amir Coffey for a layup. So very encouraging signs from Musa Diabate. And in conclusion, I think that the Clippers... Don't need to go out and get a backup big anymore, honestly. I would only go out and get a backup big if the season starts and they feel as though, you know what, we need something. But I think you give Moses Brown and Musa a chance because they looked very encouraging. And, you know, just to cap it off on Jason Preston as well, I thought he got a little more comfortable as the game went on. You saw him relocate for a three in the second half and make it from the left corner. But as I said, he's probably not, he's not going to get minutes. There's just not enough spots for him to get minutes this season. But there is potential there. Four points for him. And by the way, nine rebounds and ten assists for Preston. And one thing that really stuck out to me, he can pass the ball. He really can pass the ball. Looking up ahead, there was one play where he looked up ahead and threw like a 
pass 70 feet up the court to Terrence Mann, who had established some really good deep position, po kind of post position around the restricted area. And Jason Preston just threw it over the top beautifully right to Terrence for a layup. And, you know, that's a dime dropper right there, Jason Preston. 10 assists in a preseason game in 31 minutes. So very encouraging. The one thing about Preston I noticed was in the beginning of the game, he was hesitant to shoot. He got the ball one time 10 feet away, like right at the foul line straight away, and he was given plenty of room to shoot, and he didn't look at the basket. He was still looking to pass. So again, I think that could just be his first real game, putting on that Clipper jersey in a preseason, just kind of getting comfortable on the floor. And I'm excited to see more of him in his preseason, honestly. But as far as Terrence Mann, Amir Coffey, really solid did their things. Amir Coffey, you know, a lot of people are talking about it on Twitter. Is there a place for him in the rotation? I mean, he's the 12th man right now. And he just has a lot of ability to do many things. He's versatile and can guard multiple positions. He improved in the pick and roll last season, ball handling. He can get to the rim and is a very solid finisher. And even though he was 0 for 2 from 3 in this game, you know he has the ability to step out and make that 3. So... It's, just, again, Ty Lue has a very tough job with all these fantastic players that he has. Speaking of fantastic players, but a guy that had not a great game, at least offensively to me, was Brandon Boston Jr. He was one for nine in 27 minutes. And the thing about Brandon is, I feel like he was forcing it a bit. He was kind of pressing, and he's like, and in his head he's probably thinking, oh, okay, preseason, these guys aren't even in the league. They're a second-tier Israeli team. I'm going to go out and get buckets, but... He was kind of driving into traffic and forcing it a little bit. And I think the, the main thing with Brandon Boston that causes him to be inefficient is I think sometimes he needs to just let the game come to him a little more. I think that's what it really is. Just let the game come to him a little more. He was kind of forcing it a bit. Is there anything to be concerned about with him? Not really. But I think he's going to spend a lot of time at Agua Caliente uh, in Ontario for the G League team because, again, same with Boston. He's probably the 13th option right now on the roster, and there are just too many good players on this team. So, you know, not a big deal there. Marcus Morris, as I said, he ended 4 for 10. One thing I noticed about him is he did look a little bit slimmer, like he said in the presser. And there were a couple times where he ripped through and actually got to the rim. And there was one play early in the first uh, quarter where he got to the basket, kicked it out to Luke Kennard for an open three, draw, drew two defenders. And that's one thing I said about Marcus Morris that was a weakness for him. Just wasn't able to get to the basket like that. He just doesn't have a burst anymore, doesn't get off the ground. But he looked a little bit quicker. Now, am I just overreacting because he was playing against players that aren't NBA players? Maybe. So that's why I'll hold off my judgment on if he actually looks a step quicker. But he definitely looked a little bit slimmer and he looked like he was moving very well. Mind you, this was Marcus Morris Sr.'s first preseason game as a member of the Clippers because both off seasons or both preseasons going into it, he was dealing with a knee issue. So it's good to see that. And then... As far as everyone else, Robert Covington, Luke Kennard was just unbelievable. But I'm going to go in more depth about Luke Kennard coming up because there is absolutely no way this guy can not be in the rotation going forward. There's no way. Because that man is one of the best freaking shooters in the world. And I'm going to talk about his performance in some depth coming up. The Los Angeles Dodgers are the favorites heading into the month of October to win the 22 World Series. They're plus 275, highest odds in the league, best record in franchise history. You've got to go place your bets on Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports wagering and betting information for every sport baseball, basketball, MMA, boxing, soccer, World Cup coming up, basketball, of course. And to do that, just go to betonline.net on your mobile device or online to place your bets. Bet online, where the game starts. Okay, to close out, first preseason game. And by the way, if you're curious, 37 to 16 was the score in favor of the Clippers in the first quarter, 28 to 14 in the second quarter. And then the third quarter was actually tied at 29. Team both teams scored the same amount of points. And then 27 to 22 in favor of the Clippers in the fourth. But as, as I said, you know, the game was blown open in the first half, 32-55. And the Clippers ended up winning by 50. <laughs> or 40, I'm sorry, 40 points. 
Oof. Luke Kennard, ladies and gentlemen, one of the best shooters in the world right now. And that's not an exaggeration. He truly is. Every single time he shot that ball, I thought it was going in. And every single time he shot the ball, it almost did go in. He was five for seven from the field, four for five from three. He's, as I said many times, one of the best off-ball players on the team, if not maybe the best. You can run so many different sets for him. He's constantly moving, and he has good spontaneous movement as well. He is just absolute splash. Like, there's just no way with a guy that's that good of a three-point shooter that shot 45% last season is only going to get better that he shouldn't be in the rotation regularly, even when everyone's healthy. I'm sorry. You have to find a way to get him in there. Even if it's only for 9, 10 minutes, you have to. He's so lethal, and he can get hot so fast. And honestly, the biggest question is, oh, but he's not very good at defense. If you watch Clipper basketball consistently, yeah, the first year he wasn't that great at defense, but he wasn't like a total, total liability. And last year, he wasn't even bad at defense at all. He was very average, actually, much better. In fact, I'd even say decent. He competes. He has a high defensive IQ for the most part, and he got strong. Stronger, and he wasn't able to just get bullied anymore. That was the one thing I noticed the first season. Is some stronger guards were and wings, they were just kind of getting their, having their way with him and getting deep two feet into the paint against him. But he really held his own more last season. So in my opinion, you have to find a spot for him. It's just he's too good of a shooter, too good. But overall, the Clippers shot fifty point six percent from the field, forty five percent. From deep, 13 makes on 29 attempts. Free throw shooting, definitely a room room for improvement there. 30 for 43 for them. And by the way, it was really funny to see of an old friend on the Maccabi bench, Terrence Jones, who was on that Houston Rockets team that came back from a 3-1 deficit against us. And yeah, we're not going to go in depth about that, but... No Nico Batum, by the way. No Norman Powell or Ivica Zubats either. No Reggie Jackson. I'm hoping to see those guys in the next game against Portland. That is coming on Monday, October 3rd. And Kawhi Leonard is set to make his return. I could not be more ecstatic. Clipper Nation, that is going to be a big episode because we're going to be talking about Kawhi Leonard back. Oh, I cannot wait. As for the rest, they look good, especially Luke Kennard. Really, especially Luke Kennard, but I'm very encouraged by Musa Diabate, guys. Extremely. And just the Clippers' versatility and ability to switch so many guys is awesome. And their three-point shooting. Like Robert Covington, he made a really is making a very strong case to start instead of Nico Batum because he's younger, I think, right? Nico Batum is 33, Roko's 31. So honestly, if the Clippers want to start Robert Covington instead, I'm not opposed to that at all. I know I said I want it to be Reggie, Kawhi, Paul, Nico, Zoo to start the season because Nico has that familiarity. But Robert Covington is one of those guys that's so easy to gel with this team because he doesn't need the ball. He just wants to spot up and shoot and play good defense. That's all he needs. And he stood out more against these, you know, second tier Israeli players. Just his length and the passing lanes had this one steal, went all the way. He was lighting it up super fast. So the rebound disparity, 55 to 38 in favor of the Clippers. The Clippers also had 27 assists to Maccabi 16. And the leading scorer for them, 16 points from Luke Kennard, who didn't play the entire second half. He was just awesome. But 1-0 to start the preseason for the Clippers. Not much to take from it because, as I said so many times already, it's not an NBA team. It's just great to see the guys back out there. And Luke Kennard, yeah, he needs to find a way to get minutes even when everyone's healthy. Because even if, if if Kawhi's out or Paul's out or even one of those guys are out, especially a guard like Reggie, John Wall, or, or Norman Powell, he's going to play, obviously. But it's my concern is when everybody's healthy, I'm thinking more down the line, playoffs, need Kennard to get minutes. He's just so incredible, and his movement off the ball is is invaluable in my opinion. But great start, ladies and gentlemen. Clipper Nation, we're looking good. October 3rd, Portland Trailblazers. Hopefully see Moses Brown and Musa Diabate play against actual NBA players to see how they do against them. 121-81 to is the final score from Seattle. And by the way, as for the other guys that came off the bench, if you're wondering, Lucas Williamson was 0-6, 0 points. Didn't see too many encouraging signs from him. He's looking like he's going to get cut at this point. I know that sounds so mean. I don't mean to be mean. Michael DeVoe, he actually wasn't terrible. 
four for four for five when he came in and 14 points just like that very quickly and four for six from three so he's making a case for himself right now we'll, we'll see if he gets any minutes against Portland but Clipper basketball is back and I couldn't be more thrilled and I hope you're thrilled let me know who's your player of the game actually better question than that did you see enough from Musa and Moses to think that one of them could be the backup center and we don't have to go out and get one right now let me know. Do we need to go out and get a backup center right now after what we saw from Moses and Musa? Remember, commenting on the YouTube channel and subscribing to the YouTube channel is the fastest way to grow the show. So make sure you do that. Make sure you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And of course, to keep giving me constructive criticism, guys, especially if you were here listening to Chuck and Will before I took over, if there were things that they did that you want me to incorporate, please let me know. I always want to become better at this and give you, the fan, what you want. And Clipper fans, this is going to be an amazing season. It could be the season we've all been waiting for, a championship season. And if I'm going to host this podcast, I want to be at my absolute best. And of course, alongside this podcast, I host my own. After Clipper Games, not preseason though, but after Clipper Games, going live, filming vlogs at Clipper Games and sporting events that I attend. Remember, if you want to check out any of the vlogs from the 2021 playoffs, I was at every single game. Go check them out on my YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, and subscribe to it. If you're a Clipper fan or basketball fan of any sort, because I go all in and I try to teach people about the history of the game and do things that other kids my age and even older don't do. But thank you so much for listening. Make sure to subscribe to Locked On Clippers. Follow me at Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. My player of the game, I'm going to go with Musa Diabate. 14.7 rebounds. I just love this switch ability and versatility and how much he was guarding the perimeter, even at his size encouraging signs but if you want to say Moses Brown was the player of the game with his double double I wouldn't uh I wouldn't be opposed same goes for Luke Kennard who was just 16 points effortlessly four or five from three it was just nuketown as as we like to say but thanks everybody you already know the deal the age-old proverb go Clippers